Okay, so memory is a very integral part of every agent nowadays. And if you're curious about learning how exactly they work under the hood, and of course, some theory as always in my channel, then this is the right video for you. Because we're gonna talk about different types of memories and how they are implemented both in theory and in practice. Now, why are we even talking about memory? Well, ChatGPT introduced this feature where you can toggle it on and off in 2024 and our conversations are not feeling that dry anymore meaning the llm can actually remember what you were talking about a month or even two months ago how cool is that now there has been studies which compared how different types of memories of llm can be compared to actual human types of memories and we ended up with four different types of memory actually two clusters or two categories short-term memory and the long-term memory. Now let's take a look. So the short-term memory is basically the following. So if the user says, my name is Alice and I'm learning about AI, what we're gonna do is we're going to store every message in a simple array of strings, right? Then when the agent answers, hey Alice, it's great to hear that you are learning about AI, we're gonna take the same message and store it as a string again in the same array, which is called messages. Very simple, right? And whenever we ask another question or on the next prompt of the user, let's say, what's my name, to be able to test whether it remembers something, what we're gonna do is we're going to pass some more things into the context window. Now, what is the context window? Context window is something that we're giving an LLM to compute. So we're going to pass our current prompt, which is in green. So this is our new message, what's my name? But we're also passing something called a system prompt. System prompt is usually hidden in the chat. So ChatGPT, whenever you're talking to, to it, you don't see the system prompt, you only see your own prompts. So the system prompt is basically going to contain everything that was in the messages array previously. So it's going to have your initial prompt and the answer of the agent as well. And with that said, your agent is now seeing your past conversation and be able to answer to your current question. So it's gonna say, your name is Alice because we literally provided it in a system prompt. Now, what's the drawback of the short-term memory? And don't get me wrong, short-term memory is still used in ChatGPT in your current chats, but it has no access to other chats. And the second limitation is the fact that the context window will grow exponentially or will grow linearly the more chat text you have or the more questions you ask. So there's a limitation to the context window. And of course, our context windows nowadays are humongous, but still you're going to hit the limit at some point and ChatGPT is gonna say, hey, please start a new conversation or your browser is gonna be very slow. And the second thing is that the more, the bigger your system prompt is, and the board bigger your context window is, the more tokens you're using. And the more tokens you're using, the more compute is on the LLM side and the more money you're spending or the company is spending. So short-term memory is not ideal. One thing we can do is of course delete the older messages from the bottom of the queue of the messages array as new messages arrive. But again, it's still used nowadays, but for complex tasks, you still need long-term memory. Now let's take a look at the short-term memory to be able to understand how exactly it works. So we're gonna be using LangGraph, which is a library kind of a standard nowadays, I would say, to be for building agents. Now we're gonna be installing LangGraph. I have my API key, but you don't see the whole key, so don't worry about it. It's an OP, open API key. And what we're gonna do is we're going to append uh, our every message that's coming into our messages array. So this is our messages array and it's an object called state. And every time we run the question or give it a prompt, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the state from the messages and we're going to append it to our current query. So what the output is gonna look like when we run this cell is the following. My name is Alice. And at the same time, we're gonna be using the short-term memory and it's gonna respond something to us. And now our second question, what's my name? It's going to be using the things that it previously stored in the array. In this case, we have three messages. I think I just didn't clean up the memory there. So it stored the message from my previous run. 
but it basically knows our name now because it has stored some strings within the array. How cool is that? So how does a long-term memory is going to look like? We're gonna start with the semantic memory. So the semantic memory is all about remembering the important knowledge and some domain knowledge that you're going to be using within your conversations. So let's say if the user says, hey, I work as a software engineer at TechCorp and I love building AI systems, we're gonna do the following thing. We're gonna use an LLM, can be the same LLM that actually gives us answers here. So it can be the same LLM, but it doesn't have to be. But in this case, we're gonna assume that it's the same LLM. And while we do send this prompt to the LLM, we're first going to do the following. We're going to take this message. We're going to say, extract facts matching this criteria. So name entities, preferences, skills, goals, and important dates or numbers. And then we're going to make this request or give this prompt to an LLM, as well as our question here. And then it's going to extract the following things. So it's going to say a named entity, tech corp preferences, loves building AI systems, skills or expertise, software engineer. Then what we're going to do with this data is we're going to turn it into a vector. And I have a video on vector databases. So go check it out if you're not familiar with those. And we're going to store all of that data, all of the text as a vector in our vector database. When the agent gives us an answer and we ask the second time, what do you know about my job? Just to see if it memory actually works. What we're gonna do is before sending this request to the LLM for an answer, we're going to perform a similarity search. And similarity search goes hand in hand with vector databases because we're able to turn this prompt into a vector and then search for similar vectors within the vector database. And the vector database is going to give us an answer. And we're going to put this answer as the system prompt in this case. And the answer is going to be person works for TechCorp as a software engineer and loves building AI systems. And then our simple prompt that is also here. Now an LLM has more context and has memory, so to say, and is able to give us a better answer. This is all how long-term memory works. And the cool thing is not only one chat can use this vector database, but this vector database can be shared across different chats for a same user. And the way it's gonna look in the code is the following. So if I open this, we're gonna see that now we're using embeddings because we are going to be storing these embeddings within a vector database. And the vector database, it's gonna be Chroma from Langchain to make it easy. And it's going to have a collection name and embeddings function. An important part actually comes here. This is the prompt that we're going to give us, give our LLM before sending it for an answer. So we're gonna say extract facts matching this criteria as we saw in the blackboard. And then we're actually going to store these data vector store dot add text. And we're going to store our facts here. And then when we need to fetch this data for storing it in the context window, we're gonna do the so following. We're going to say similarity search, and then we're gonna be getting the last three messages, but this is configurable depending on how big you want your context window to be. And now if we look at the output, we're gonna see that. So the first message is gonna be, I work as a software engineer at TechCorp and I love building AI systems. We're gonna be storing these three facts, okay? Now, the agent gives us a response. And the second time when we say, what do you know about my job? It's going to say, hey, not storing anything because we didn't provide any information that is storable, but we can retrieve three relevant facts that are already in our vector database. And then we're gonna say, you work as a software engineer at TechCore because it actually compared those vectors and was able to see relevant information in the memory, memory being the vector database. Now let's go back to the blackboard and talk about the another type of memory, which is episodic memory. Again, compared to humans, episodic memory basically means that now instead of saving the domain knowledge, we're simply going to pass a different types of a query to our LLM before storing it in the database. And the database here is gonna be a bit different, but bear with me. So we're gonna say, extract only one main episode from this message. For this episode, include what happened, when it happened, who was involved and the outcome. And the outcome or the output of this LLM is going to be the following. We're going to have a key value pair. It's going to be a timestamp, very important because it's an episode in, the, in our memory. And we're gonna say last month, I attended an AI conference in San Francisco 
where I met this and that. So this was our actual question. And then we're going to get a response from the LLM. And then when we ask, tell me about my recent experience to test the memory again, what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve something from the database. But here's an interesting part. Since this is a value key pair, we don't have to store it as an embedding or as a vector. What we can do is we can simply use MongoDB or Redis for a key value pair. But we, MongoDB is probably a cool database because it can store key value pairs and it can also store embeddings at the same time. Now, when we do filter for the similarities, we can either do a similarity search or a filter search. And the filter search is going to simply filter by the timestamp. Okay, so let's say what happened within the last month is going to filter the timestamp for the last month window. And then we're going to supply it as a context window for this question here. We're going to say, take it into account past experiences. Last month, I attended this and that, and then our new message. And this is how our long term episodic memory is going to look like. Quick demonstration episodic memory is going to look like the following. As you saw, we have some actual event description. So we're going to look at the keywords happened, attended, met, experienced, meeting. This gives us a clue that it's an episode in the memory. And this is pretty much the whole idea of the memory in agents or LLMs. And we're going to say extract important episodes. And we're going to especially be mindful of these words and then store them in the database as JSON. And here's basically the prompt that we're giving. And then after we stored it, in this case, I'm still using a vector database, but you can also just use Redis, as I said. And then when giving answer, we're simply going to give the episodes as the context window. So we're going to say past experiences and basically a list of experiences. So let's take a look at our output of the agent. So as we see, we say last month I attended an AI conference and we're storing this timestamp as an experience. We remember it. And then when the agent gives a response and we ask it the second time, tell me about my recent experiences, it's going to not extract any experience because there was no experiences in this sentence, but in the memory, it also has the timestamp. So it's going to say, recently you attended an AI conference because it knows that this date was recent. It's quite smart. Now, this brings me to the last type of the memory, which is the procedural memory. I have no Blackboard explanation for this because this is simply a different type of query that we're making to an LLM before sending it as the in the context window. Now, if we look at the procedural method, the only difference we're going to see is in the prompt. So we're going to say extract workflows, skills or procedures from the last user message, store them in a vector store. Again, we're using a vector store. And this is the distinct part. Okay, so we're going to say for the procedure include what the procedural skill is, step by step instructions, when to use it and benefits or outcomes. So we're basically looking for these things. And when we do send the, our prompt to the LLM for an answer, we're going to join the, all the procedures and we're going to say, hey, these are the known procedures that we have. And then our context is now smarter. So what we do have in the output is the following. We have a first question. I've developed a workflow for debugging Python code. First, I enable a detailed logging. Second, I use a debugger. So you get the idea, right? This is a developer telling how they debug the code. And we're going to store all of these procedures because our LLM that we initially used was smart enough to store, retrieve those. And now when the second question comes, what debugging techniques do I know? It's basically going to extract nothing for now because there was nothing to extract in this question, but it's going to retrieve three found procedures that it already has with the timestamps and then it's going to include it in the response. Okay, how cool is that? And guys, if you like this video, as always, subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any remarks. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.